Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at recreating Donkey Kong in Unity, although the one major difference is that we will use 3D models rather than 2D images. However, the functionality will be the same. The camera will still be in a fixed position. We're not going to like an over-the-shoulder uh, approach or anything like that. The game will function essentially the same. It's just we're using 3D objects rather than 2D. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So there's only a few objects we're using. This is the oil barrel at the bottom, which catches fires when the um, barrels hit it. This will be what we're gonna use instead of Mario. He has an ax, that way I can use that for the hammer attack animation. He also has a run animation. He doesn't have a climb animation, but that's no big deal. Uh, you'll see how you can do the other animations so you'll know how to trigger a climb animation for yours. Uh, this was made in a 3D modeler. I made that in a 3D modeler, and that one was also purchased. So that one, that one, and that one were purchased. So no, I cannot post this project anywhere because I do not have permission to redistribute models that I've purchased. I can only include them in complete games where there is no intention to extract them as individual models. Okay, so we're just going to take this, which again was made in a 3D modeler. Let's rotate this around. We're going to give it a bit of an incline, so it's going to put it at four. The only thing that I really did to it is I added a box collider. I didn't want anything weird happening with the geometry, so I just surrounded the whole thing with a box collider. It is not a trigger. We want this to be solid. That way our character can run on it and our barrels can roll on it because we will be using gravity. Speaking of which, which we'll get to in a few seconds, the physics in general is really kind of wonky in Unity, and it doesn't necessarily work the way you would expect it to work. Although in Unity's defense, very often games don't really use true physics, maybe for certain things, but others it doesn't. So we'll have to do a few overrides to get the effect that we want. Okay, so we just placed that, let's place that, say, at zero, and then we gave it a four rotation. So we'll copy paste let's move that up eight give it a negative four rotation and we'll offset this a little bit to the left that way the barrels will roll down and keep rolling we're still going to have to put um barriers invisible barriers to the left and right and the original arcade game had something like that too because at the top when mario jumped and grabbed the hammer he would actually bounce off the side and come back Depending how you did it, if you if you didn't jump far enough, then yeah, you would plummet to the ground. But if you jumped really far, you would bounce off the side and come back. So we'll have uh, invisible bumpers there. It will also help us control the barrels. Okay, so now just rinse and repeat. Copy, paste, move this one up to 16. So we're keeping the separation of 8 consistent. You can use whatever amount you want. And then we'll copy this one again, just so we don't have to do the rotation because it's already rotated and we'll go up to 24. I'm only going to do four of these. The original game had six, so if you want to keep going to six, that's fine. Again, I'm just interested in showing you the core functionality. You can expand on it. Let's add the ladders just so they look a little bit more like ladders. Right now, the ladders do not have a collider, so they won't interfere with anything. We'll probably put a trigger on them. That way the barrows can roll through them uninhibited. Not quite tall enough vertically, so we'll make this two. That's good enough for now. We're, we're probably not going to actually do anything with the ladders functionally in this tutorial. We'll do that in the next one if there's sufficient interest. So yeah, so there's a mesh renderer, but no mesh collider. So uh, the the um, barrel should go through them no problem. So let's move this one, put it over here-ish. And then one more. And in the original game, there were like some broken ones. So that kind of works out that this doesn't reach the whole thing. So you can do, you know, something like that. So it looks broken. 
and something like that. Again, I'm not looking to exactly recreate. I just want to teach you guys the functionality. Okay, so now this is really the key is the barrel. This is what I want to show you in this example. Actually, let's go ahead and just put the oil drum down here. I'm not sure when they started doing it, but it seemed like that they're starting to use um, more uh, intuitive placement because if you notice when I placed it overlapping this, it dropped it into the right place. I'm not quite sure when Unity started doing that, but it's a nice feature. And that's called oil. Okay. So here's the barrel. So this is what's going to take a couple minutes explanation. So don't worry about the visual appearance of it. That has nothing to do with the functionality. Okay. So the first thing I added to it was a capsule collider. There was a mesh collider. I got rid of it because you had all these like flat edges. So it was like wobbling about. So what I did is I added a capsule collider. That way there's this nice flat edge. And I extended the capsule collider well beyond the edge of the barrel because we want to avoid this thing like tumbling over. Because if you've got, if you've got this um, dropping, you might risk this tumbling over. So you want to make sure that that flat edge is coming all the way down past the edge of the barrel. And there's another precaution that we take too. All right, so you add a capsule collider. It is not a trigger. As I said, we are going to use gravity, okay? Uh, then you extend out the capsule collider. Next, rigid body. I added a little bit of mass, but probably don't have to. Um, there are a few things that I'm thinking about going forward that we might want a little bit more mass to, but for now we can just leave it like that. So it defaults to one, you can leave it as one. I changed it to three, but again, right now, I don't think it's gonna have any impact. Gravity, very important. So again, everything is gonna be solid, at least at this moment. And the barrel is going to be solid. The character is going to be solid. The girders are going to be solid. So we want to use gravity so everything stays on a surface. Now for freeze rotation. So right now, up is Y. And yes, there's water in the barrel, but we rotate it the opposite direction so you don't see the water. So Y is up, okay? It won't be up when we put it into the screen because we're going to rotate it, okay? When we put it into the scene, it's going to rotate. And it's going to rotate this way, okay? So that means it's rotating along the y-axis, the local y-axis, okay? So we're going to freeze x and we're going to freeze z, again, because we don't want it to wobble. And then next is the script. So we'll look at the script in just a second. I just want to add one more thing. So we added a capsule collider. We extended it above the top and bottom of the barrel. We added a rigid body. We enabled gravity. We froze the rotation of X and Z. Again, this might be different on yours depending on the orientation of your barrel. And we added a script. So let's go ahead and I mentioned that there are going to be like bumpers on the side. So let's go ahead and add those. So we're going to create empty and let's put this at like zero. That's not going to where it's going to stay. I'm just doing this so I know where it is. Okay. So the only thing we really want is a collider. So we want physics. We want a box collider. Let's make sure it's deep enough. So we'll make it two and it needs to be really, really tall. So let's make it like 30. So we might have to reposition this, but the idea is that the barrel will roll off here. It'll hit this and then bounce and keep going. And I, it does matter the name. I'm going to quickly look at the script. Uh, don't worry about this. We'll come back in a minute. So border R was the name because it's hard coded to look for a certain object name. And the other one, therefore, must be border L. And that one will move to this side. And depending on the position, if you don't put this out far enough, what will happen is the barrel will roll. It'll hit this and then hit this and then bounce back again. Uh, you don't want that. So you're going to have to position this in such a way. Now, can you do it without these? 
Yes, but here's the problem. This would have to go out even further, would look kind of odd, okay? Um, and two, it would drop and be very slow. So what we're doing is we're going to use the bumper to basically prime it. So is that when it hits the bumper, it gets its velocity back. Okay, so, all right, so we have our barrel, and it has a script, and now let's look at that script. So, start section. So when the barrel is instantiated, get component rigid body dot velocity equals new vector 3606. So this is you adding a speed of six unity units per second along the x um, axis in a positive direction. So six unity units per second, that's what that number means. You know how like everything is on a grid, so like this one is at zero, and if I move it up, it would be at one. Well, that's one unity unit. Okay, so when the uh, barrel is instantiated, six unity units per second along the x-axis positive direction, we're not going to do anything to the y-axis because, again, gravity is enabled. We're going to have gravity handle y. And as we said, z, the depth of field, we're not using that. We're not going towards or away from the screen. This is, again, constrained to the x and y-axis, just like the original arcade game. So we are applying velocity when the object is instantiated. At the moment, we're not doing anything in the update section. Next on trigger enter collider other so we're looking for a trigger right now there's only one trigger this so if you click on this you can see it has a box collider but this time it's a trigger why didn't i use a capsule because it really doesn't matter it doesn't have to be exact collision for this So this is the only trigger that should occur because this is the only object that's a trigger right now. Like we said, the ladders will probably eventually be triggers, but right now they're not. So on trigger enter, collider other, if other.name is equal to oil, then destroy the game object. So in other words, the script, uh, excuse me, the object the script is attached to, if it collides with another object whose name is oil, then destroy the object the script is attached to. It's attached to the barrel. So if the barrel collides with an object called oil, destroy it. We would then also have like a particle system flare up. Again, that's more kind of uh, bells and whistles and flourishes that we'll deal with if the video has enough traction, if, if people are interested. Okay, so that was on trigger enter. Now on collision enter. So it's important to understand that if something is a trigger, you specifically ch check for a trigger. If something is not a trigger, you have to check for a solid collision. So solid collisions will still occur, but this gives you the opportunity to intervene and say, okay, that a collision occurred, and rather than just bouncing off like you normally would using the default physics engine, which on a good day is uh, convoluted and on a bad day is a total uh, you know, garbage fire, in my opinion. So when the collision happens, we're going to intervene and get exactly what we want to happen. So if the collision dot game object dot name is border R, in other words, if the object the script is attached to, again, the barrel, if the barrel collides with another object and the name of that object is border R, we want something to happen. Well, this should look familiar. We just did this. Get component rigid body dot velocity equals new vector three negative six zero. In other words, turn around, go in the opposite direction. We had you going six unit units per second. If you hit this um, border, go six unit uh, go negative six unit units per second. So go six unit units per second in the other direction. And then we check again if collision dot game object dot name equals border l. So that was the second one I created on the other side. Again. Get component rigid body velocity equals new vector three six zero zero. So this is you intervening that when the collision occurs, you don't want the default stuff to happen. You want to intervene and say, here's what I want to happen. Now, gravity, you're not changing. Gravity is still taking effect, but you're saying this is how much velocity I want to be applied when that collision occurs. Otherwise, it'll like hit the barrier and then just drop straight down and then very slowly start rolling. So rather than showing you all the fails, I'm just showing you how to get past it. If you want to check for yourself, feel free. I just didn't want to waste your time.
So these have box colliders, they're not triggers, so they're solid. So that, I think we can run this. Well, not quite. We need a barrel. So we'll put the barrel up here. I'm not sure when I started doing that, but I noticed that recently is that the placement seems to be a little bit more intuitive that if you overlap another object, it might place it on top of it. Because if you notice, it was going to place it out in the middle of nowhere, but then it changed it and placed it right on top of it. So not sure when that start started happening, but that's a nice touch. Okay, so if I haven't forgotten anything, what's going to happen is this will start rolling. I, I just want to make sure it's not like embedded in this and create a problem. It's going to go six unity units per second, but then it's going to keep increasing because velocity is working. So the only the only thing that might happen that we don't want is when it hits the barrier, it might bounce and hit this edge. If so, we just move the barrier out. Okay, so it did hit that, just like I thought. So easy enough fix. And you could see what happened. It hit the girder under it and it just kind of sat there and started slowly rolling. That's not exactly exciting. We want to keep the momentum up. See, there we go. All right, so we have to fix it there. See what I mean? The, that wonderful unity... That wonderful Unity uh, physics engine. Another way around this, I suppose you could add a bounce material to that and see if it takes care of the issue. But again, by doing this, you're tightly controlling the speed. You're saying reset it to six. And it disappears there. Okay, so that is quite a bit for our first tutorial. Let's stop there because, like I said, the barrel was the most complex thing. Give you guys a chance to process this. If you're interested, please leave a like. Uh, if there's certain features you want to see, please leave a comment. But I'm sure you've all played Donkey Kong or you can at least see videos of it so you know what the basic game is like. The next video, we will add the uh, player here. We'll add the axes, the ability to run, play the right animation, climb up the ladders, uh, you know, grab the axe to destroy those. And then at that point, we'll see if you guys want to see any more. So the core functionality of the first of the four screens, because if I recall correctly, there are four screens to Donkey Kong, is going to be done in just two videos. So that easy. So again, please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Leave a comment if there's a certain feature you want to see. And um, I hope you found this useful and please do enjoy the rest of your day.